Okay, so our next presentation in this series is um, uh, something that was developed by Diva and her colleagues, but um, she couldn't make it, so Jonathan is here to uh, present it. And he's going to be talking about uh, a newly developed uh, model that has some features that might be interesting to put into the, the next generation model. <clears throat> So um, <clears throat> our model isn't as quite as generic as some of the other ones we've seen. It was more tailored for um, the 3PS cod stock off the southern coast of, of Newfoundland. So um, Divya Varki is a research scientist at the Northwest Atlantic Fisheries Center at uh, Fisheries and Oceans Canada in St. John's, Newfoundland. And I'm Jonathan Bavin, a uh, statistics PhD student who at Dalhousie University who uh, helped uh, to uh, develop the model. So um, our model is very much a small niche within the fishery stock assessment modeling. So it's mainly for two types of uh, data, survey index at age and catch at age, can't handle any other types of data. So we tried to develop one framework where different model structures can be explored and compared and the user can ask questions. How would the model respond if we modeled fishery selectivity differently? Uh, what is the influence of time varying natural mortality versus time and age invariant M assumptions? So hybrid is implemented in TMB. Um, it has different options for F structure, M structure, uh, fitting catch at age, fitting surveys. And uh, it uses what's called a flex dashboard, which is like a, a HTML R markdown uh, system for plotting diagnostics and, and uh, trends and retros and that kind of thing that was developed by Dr. Paul Regular, also at um, <coughs> the Northwest Atlantic Fishery Center. So, <coughs> It's the reason why the model is called hybrid is because it's a kind of a combination of SAM and the Northern Cod assessment model. Um, Divya just kind of took the parts that she liked best with a little uh, other additions as well. So, um, so for recruitment, we only have a random walk um, in the state equation. We have, uh, uh, sorry, we have <coughs> um, recruitment process as a random walk, and then we have a survival process and a plus group. Um, so there's five different options for how uh, F can be fit in this model. So in all cases, F is, is fit as parameters. And we are predicting catch using the Baranoff catch equation, and we're fitting to catch age data. So, <clears throat> uh, the five different options available for F uh, selectivity um, allow for different flexibility in the connection between ages and years. So, if the gear composition in the fishery has changed over time, which is something that has occurred in our fishery, uh, could possibly deal with that, or whether the fishery targets a dominant year class and how it can change over from one year to the next. <clears throat> so there's uh, five different options. The first option is just a non-parametric age effect that does not vary with time, although time blocks could be implemented. Um, as shown here, oops, sorry. Um, the second option is a parametric age effect, which is uh, unlike the non-parametric form, the pattern over ages is restricted to a logistic uh, flat or um, so flat or a double uh, logistic. <coughs> and then we also have a SAM, a SAM style um, parameterization of F where it's a multivariate random walk over years. And there's also a uh, customized version of that where 
In our stock, there's been a, there was a moratorium in 1994 uh, where there was a break in all fishing. And so the model has difficulty dealing with this huge uh, collapse in fishing rates. So in order to deal with that, it just can restart the uh, random walk at a specified year. And we can also decorrelate um, certain ages um, in the, the covariance matrix of the, the year one structure. So then the, the fifth option is a um, correlated separable AR1 pattern in, in, in year and age. And so the, the purpose of this is that um, <clears throat> if there is believed to be that the fishery is targeting a stronger year class, then they can better follow that as they move through the fisheries, uh, through the fishery. So, so right now, um, we have two options for fitting catch age data. Um, so one is just to fit catch numbers at age, and that's if you have a reliable time series. And the second option is to fit catch proportions and use a censored likelihood uh, for the landings to account for different levels of reliability in catch magnitude over time. <clears throat> so in our stock, that's something that has been an issue is that we have believed to be periods where there's both um, underreporting and overreporting. So we fit catch proportions using uh, continuation ratio logits, which is just the probability of being age A, given that you're greater than or equal <coughs> to A. So for the censored bounds, you fit to the bounds uh, them, themselves as the data and not to, to the landing. So in the bottom uh, right corner, you can see this plot uh, here where it shows um, the landings multipliers. So the, this is the lower uh, bound, for example, and then above is the, the true, and then one is just uh, where, where it is. So probably one of the more interesting things we've done in this model is that we've tried um, to do a time invariant parameterization of M and where it's mainly based on uh, mortality is based on, on some sort of trend in an index. So right now uh, we're mainly trying to focus this on a condition-based M. Um, and we also have a size specific Lorenzen option that we tried that um, wasn't super well performing in our case. And it was pointed out that uh, the mortality should be an additive effect, but uh, we have not yet implemented that. So uh, for the <coughs> For the survey indices, we are fitting uh, log indices for the surveys with multiplicative errors. And one problem in, in 3PS COD is that, uh, and the, some of the surrounding stocks in the area, is that uh, there is a non-random uh, missing pattern that has occurred in the older ages, particularly in the more recent period that in the surveys, we're not seeing older ages, which has created a lot of zeros in the survey indices. So we are using a censored likelihood uh, <clears throat> to deal with the missing values. Um, so, so the idea there is that this is kind of like a, a survey uh, detection limit um, so that we don't think that the the values are actually below uh, that that the fish don't exist that there are no fish at that age, but that uh, they are just we just can't catch them at some detection level. Um, so 
estimated parameters are fed into uh, catchability by age and, and survey. Um, so catchability for surveys one and two, for example, are estimated directly, but the catchability for survey three is the catchability for survey one plus an adjustment. So in our, in our case, for example, uh, we had uh, one survey where they added considerable amounts of, um, they added uh, extra strata and they changed the gear. So in order to try and make it one time series, uh, we do an adjustment, uh, which enables us to use a longer time series throughout the model. So we also have the option to do uh, correlated year effects. Um, however, they are not used here uh, because we don't, we're not really sure if the value is clear because it's difficult to do projections uh, using these year effects. So this is just a summary of, of some of the options uh, that are available in the model. And then uh, Divya also wanted me to show um, the, the flex dashboard just as like a, an idea of, of what you can do with the diagnostics. So, so this is the, the flex dashboard, which is an HTML R markdown file where you can put in your um, you can put in the outputs from the model directly and it has a lot of uh, neat features that makes comparisons between models and investigation uh, easily. So if you wanted to know everything about this point here, you can just click on it and it'll show you in the other plots where that point belongs. There's also, um, if you have like, for example, comparing the landings of, of three different models, then you can easily just target one and see how it did, or you can just turn off one. Um, so you can kind of customize these and turn off features as you need. Um, yeah. That's uh, so one thing Divya was looking uh, for in this meeting was was feedback and and questions or clarifications. Thanks. Okay. Thanks, Jonathan. Um, does anyone have any questions? Yeah, uh, Ian. On that last the Flex dashboard, that yeah. looks fantastic. Uh, I'm curious if, given that it's sort of dynamic and customizable, what, uh, if you want to then export a figure to put it in a report, what, what's that process so, look like? So there's a, there's a couple options. So because it's an R Markdown file, you could just take that and put it in another R Markdown file, right? Or it also gives the ability to like, you can click on this camera and it'll download it as a PNG ready for you to put it somewhere else. Yeah. Thank you, that's great. Okay, any other questions? Yeah, Andre. Yeah, this is a pretty data rich case. Yeah. Do you know much about the stability properties of the estimator when you're getting into sort of situations that are more common, uh, like you know noisier data, missing more missing data, uh, et cetera, et cetera? Because you know this is a this is a unique and it's a very informative data set as well. Yeah. Uh, no, unfortunately, I don't know that. Sorry. Yeah. Any other questions? Um, so I got other questions. So um, you're, you're using methods that are similar to SAM, right? Yeah. And so are there any other features of SAM that you haven't included in your model yet that you think might be useful? 
Um, well, Sam has like a multi-fleet thing. Uh, I'm also interested in, they have a catch scaler for doing their uncertainty in the, uh, in the catch that I'd like to compare uh, in more detail with the sensor likelihood approach um, to see how those do. Yeah. Okay, thanks. I got another question too. Um, if I remember correctly, you had a multivariate likelihood function for the survey data, right? Um, was it for the selectivity? Yeah. 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 So part of the problem, we can't do it for the sensor. I mean, for the survey indices easily because they have a sensor likelihood. So I need like a, a multivariate P norm or something in TMB to be able to do uh, a multivariate survey likelihood there. So for the audience, um, does anyone have a suggestion on a likelihood function that you can use for indices that um, takes account of the, the zero observations easily that would might be useful here? Isn't there a multivariate delta model that you could use? I mean, that's how we usually do these things. Yeah. But that's in two dimensions. I'm not sure about, I mean, sorry, one in dimension. I don't know. I've never tried to do it in two dimensions, but you could imagine a surface of probabilities of zeros and then um, the density given the probability. That would be the, that would be a different way of doing it than censoring it. Yeah. Because the censoring requires putting in that constant, right? Yeah, yeah. Which, whereas the delta, at least you'd be estimating those probabilities. Yeah. Unless you had none and then the whole thing will fall over. Yeah. That's a good idea. Okay, any other questions? Okay. No. Yep.